stop playing with me. I am addicted. I am hooked. This is the best thing since sliced bread. I was not prepared for all that this book encompassed. Three books in three days. Three books in three days. Oh my God, look at the first sentence of this. And so they have blind dates with the book that you can get from the library. I clearly have an addiction and I need you guys to pray for me. That many pages in. I hope you have a chance of being better. I should already be sold and I'm, I'm just not. Good morning, friends. How are you? I hope that everyone is doing well. Let me know what you're reading and all that jazz. So I have two books that I need to finish. These are the last two books for my February TBR. These were all the books that I wanted to read in the month of February. We have The Do-Over, Love in Other Words, Everyone Here is Lying, Divine Rivals, A Love Song for Ricky Wilde, Block Shot, Memphis, Grown. I put up a poll and I asked you guys if I should read Grown or His Other Mistress, I think it was. Read the book, ate it Okay, we'll talk about that in another video. And then Take My Hand, read that book, ate it up. It was so good. And then there's a either or. I was like, I'll either read The Deep or I will read Monsters We Defy. I did go ahead and decide to read The Deep just because I have never read a black fantasy book. And I was like, oh, I just want to read a black fantasy book in the month of February. <laughs> so I was like, let me go ahead and read The Deep by River Solomon. So we are going to read this in this video. <sighs> and then this second book, this is the main reason. I was like, you know what? Let me start a vlog because if I start a vlog, I have no choice but to finish this book. Surprisingly, I have not DNF'd a book this year. I came close to DNF in this book, which is Chain Gang All-Stars by Nana Kwame. And I also came close to DNFing The Art of Scandal and I almost DNF'd Iron Flame. I don't plan to DNF them just yet. I have been reading this book. Ooh, child, let me see. Wow. I started this book January the 7th. <laughs> And in real time, today is February the 27th. Hot mess. I think it's only been a struggle because I had a different idea of what the book was going to be about. It's not bad. It's just, it's not what I was expecting. It's almost reading a little bit like nonfiction at times. And if you're not in the mood for that, it's like, come on, give me what I want. So. Hi, husband. <laughs> no, you're okay. Yeah, so anyway, I originally got this book on Audible, so I've been listening to the audiobook. My cousin read it. He said it was so good. He absolutely loved it. And I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe I just need to read this book with my eyes. So I went and I got it from the library yesterday. Hopefully that helps me to finish this book. Right now I am 223 pages into this book. That many pages in, I should already be sold. And I'm, I'm just not. Oh, let's go ahead and finish out this today because I've had enough. I'm just at the point where I just wanted to be done and I heard that the ending is good but who wants to read an entire book and have a mediocre time only to have a blast at the end? Not me. Not me wearing a black turtleneck in 70 degree weather. Am I crazy or what? <laughs> Oh my God, I am so hot. Anyway, I am actually enjoying my experience more with the physical copy because I am finally vibing with the book. I went back and I listened to the first three chapters because the first three chapters are phenomenal. They grip you and you just are like, this book is about to be good. It's giving Hunger Games. There's like an announcer. They're playing in the middle of the Super Bowl. So there's commercials going on. I'm loving all of the cinematography talk. The audiobook is phenomenal. That's why why I opted to get the audiobook as opposed to the physical book. I didn't know that he was gonna have this many characters in the book. And if I had known that, I would have just probably got both. This is a great book to read in tandem. With that being said, the book is actually really good. It's just that you need to know what you're getting yourself into when you go into the book. I was not prepared for all that this book in 
encompass. I was not prepared for the heaviness, all the stats and all the facts and just like I said the non-fiction vibes that the book gives off. Chapter one and chapter two they're wildly violent and very entertaining and very exciting and just action-packed and fun and then it just dwindles off. So whatever. I actually only have about 50 more pages to go. I had to take Mikey to a driver's training. Today was his last day. I am so proud of Sonny. Oh, I'm so proud of him. I cannot believe Sonny's gonna be out here driving in the streets, okay? But anyway, we are here to get us some Froyo just to celebrate his last day and because it's absolutely beautiful. So I will be able to finish this before I go and pick up Lily because we all know once I get Lil, physical reading is over. a story that you didn't like but were unable to put down. Not this reviewer having my exact sentiment except for clearly I was able to put the book down because here we are 52 days later and I have finally finished Chain Gang All Stars. So let us get into what I liked and what I did not like about this book. So there was like this journalist she's like the main narrator and she is basically doing an interview this is like a major fight that's getting ready to happen. There's a protest going on in the background which I thought was so freaking cool. As a creator I pay attention to like lighting, aperture, camera angles and stuff like that and during the interview they're like zoom in on this person's face, get this on their arm, zoom out here, get this camera shot and I was just like oh this is really cool. I also really enjoyed the narrators. The audiobook is lit. It is fire. I see why a lot of people really enjoy the audiobook. Those narrators they really do bring the story to life. They bring the scenes to life. I love how during the protest our main narrator starts talking as if she's actually speaking through a megaphone because there's this one part where they're like we don't want no bbb or something like that okay i just found it it says this is evil can't you see we don't want no bbb this is evil can't you see we don't want no bbb Oh my god. So the audiobook was so lit because it's like mid-interview she's talking and then out of nowhere like I said you hear these background chants from the freaking protesters. It's just so cool. Those little ad-libs made the audiobook so lively and just so much fun. I also thought that the influencer concept was really cool. I'm not going to share what the influencer concept is but it's a really cool concept. I was really invested in that particular chapter once they started talking about what it is and what it does and how it affects the inmates and I was just like oh my gosh and I could really tell that Nana Kwame which oh my god his name is so cool so his name is Nana Kwame Aji Brenya that is such a cool name but because it's so long I'm just shortening it and saying Nana Kwame but anyway he really wanted to address and explore the prison system and how criminalization does dehumanize people he was able to remind us that some people they become institutionalized and they don't really want to leave there's also people they just get tired we were able to see that this Kate program system is set up in a way where it's entertaining for other people but for them they are killing each other and there's like all these rankings because once you kill so many people you get to like the top tier which is like Grand Colossal and then you're able to be free. Imagine how traumatic that is and how hard that is for these inmates to carry. Yes people do want to be free but the cost of their freedom is just very heavy and it's very intense and again it's at the entertainment of all these other people. There's a lot of stats about like sexual abuse and trans people and domestic violence rates and numbers for like police officers in their homes. It gets crazy and it sucks because I do feel like the realism and the social commentary it does kind of get lost in the book a little bit because it's so much going on and with all that going on you would not believe how many characters are in this book. I don't even remember. There's got to be somewhere between like eight and ten and that's on the low end. I really do believe that there are more 
more characters than that. Some of the characters would just come on the scene to drive home a point or to be an example for, like I said, whatever his social commentary or footnote was in that particular chapter, and then they were gone. So many character interruptions, it made it hard for us to fully connect to our two main characters, Thurwar and Stax. I just couldn't get as invested. I couldn't have the reaction that I wanted to have or that I should have had at the end of this book because I was just like, whew, overload, information overload. It's almost like two different books. And what I did find out is Anna Kwame, his debut novel was a short story book. This does kind of give short story vibes. Some of the chapters, they are literally their own little story within this book. And it was so crazy too, because a lot of other people felt the exact same way as me, which I was really happy about. Because for a second, I'm like, oh my God, is it just me? Somebody literally said, I also wanted something more from the ending. Though I agree a book like this is a tough one to wrap up. To be honest, I was confused as to what happened right there at the end. And I was like, oh my God, I'm glad it wasn't just me because I had to go back and read it like a couple times. Someone says, I think the book's main weakness was the choice to bounce around between so many characters. Someone else said, I found the writing itself and the jumping constantly from perspective to perspective without a clear structure to be jarring and frustrating for me. The concept and the world building really did overtake the characters themselves, especially with so many different main characters to keep jumping between. And I was just like, okay, glad it wasn't just me. Two of these were four star reviewers and they still felt the exact same way that I did. And that's why I said the book is still good. I just think it's important to know what you are getting yourself into when you read a book like this. Most of the time I say go into a story blind. This is not one of those stories. Get acclimated and read a couple reviews and know what you are getting yourself into before going into this book. So I was able to get 50 pages into the deep by River Solomon and I am so excited about that. I guess they're kind of like mermaids. They live underwater and they are descendants of pregnant African slave women who were thrown over a ship. So this story so far, what I'm gathering is very hard for us as black people and African Americans to remember what has happened to us or our ancestors but we do need to remember in order to keep our history alive. So far, that is the vibe that I'm getting. There's a lot of world building going on right now, but this story is going to go fast. And I heard that it is pretty mighty because it's only 166 pages. Also, like I said, I wasn't sure if I wanted to read The Deep or The Monsters We Defy, but because there's a whole nother day and I was up last night because of this storm and because of justice, <laughs> I went ahead and I downloaded the audio copy of this and I was able to listen to about 60 pages in and then I woke up and I read with my eyes and now I am on page 101. And this book is extremely cool. Let me tell you why. When I learned about Carrie, I was doing my initial research for the monsters we defy, searching for the story and characters who fill out my Harlem Renaissance era fantasy heist. A 17 year old girl who killed a white cop in self-defense during a race riot and eventually went free. She sounded like a heroine to me. My version of her story imagines her six years later Later, living with the aftermath of what she did to survive. So I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. Not only is it a Harlem Renaissance fantasy, it's also historical fiction. I'm like, ooh, this is good. And I always like to look up historical fiction and just see what inspired the author or what inspired the book, how much of the story is real, things like that. So I think this is going to be really fun. Like I said, I'm 100 pages in. That's about the mark I know if I need a DNF or not. I'm not feeling DNF vibes. So I love this for us. We are probably going to get through three freaking books and three days. Absolutely love that for us. Oh my gosh, this book is so good so far. It's a lot of world building, so it is very slow paced. It's a lot of getting to know the characters, but there was just this scene that happened and it was so cute. It totally reminded me of one of my favorite movies, 50 First Dates. So our main character, Clara, she has a curse. She can like speak to spirits. Her spirit is like, okay, we're willing to remove this curse from you if you can assemble this team and do this heist for us. I don't wanna say because I don't remember if what they have to do was on the back. Oh, it is. Okay. Okay, steal a magical ring. So yes, she has to assemble a team so that they can steal this magical ring. Justice is so low. <laughs> I am so sorry. 
sorry if you can hear her, but listen, she's living her best life. But anyway, one of the characters, Jesse, oh my God. So he had went off to the war and obviously we know there's a lot of tragedy and tragic things that go on over in the war. And so he was having these nightmares and he's like, you know what? I can't take this anymore. I need these nightmares gone. So basically his curse is that he doesn't get to remember these nightmares. He doesn't get to remember the trauma of the war. However, the woman who loves him the most is not going to be able to remember him anymore, which is so sad. Basically he gets back and he's like, there's no way this curse is gonna work for us. We have a history, we love each other. She's waiting for me. This is not gonna work, it worked. The lady did not remember who he was. And so for three months straight, he just kept coming over and trying to get her to remember him. And of course she couldn't. And so basically they just go on all these first dates. Oh my God, it's so cute. And 50 First Dates is literally one of my favorite movies. I have watched that movie at least 10 times. So I just thought that was so cute. But that's as much as we have so far. I have made it to chapter 17, which is 161 pages into this book. So far, I'm enjoying it. I'm not obsessed with it. I do love the old black folk language. It's so relatable and comforting and hilarious to me and I just love to see it in books. So I'll probably get back to the deep tonight just because I can't sit down and physically read a book at this time. Reading a book physically is such a luxury. That is why I do it in the morning or I do it at night or in the bath because throughout the day, baby, we're moving, we're shaking and we're moving. So I just can't like sit there and like read my book. So I'm just happy we have one more day left and I know for a fact I will finish both these books. Good morning. Mm. That is so good and I look an absolute mess. It's fine, I am so sleepy. It is not uncommon for children with autism to have sleep issues. She has had sleep issues since she was like one or two. So I have not had good sleep. <laughs> Oh my God, in a very long time. So anyway, we were up from about one. She went to sleep around 3.30 and I went to sleep around four o'clock this morning. So I am struggling and I am having a very slow morning. My coffee is so good. Anyway, the good news is I was able to finish The Monsters We Defy. So I listened to a few chapters when I was still half asleep. Obviously not about to just wake right up and start reading a book. And then I finished out the last hour with my own eyes and I had a good time with this. Let me check my notes here and see what did I wanna share about my final thoughts. One thing that I thought was really cool, so there is talk of like a speakeasy, right? And if you are not familiar with what a speakeasy is, it's like a hidden underground kind of like hangout, bar spot so it looks like maybe an empty warehouse or maybe you're going to a barber shop and then you go behind one door or up some stairs or down some stairs and then boom it's this whole entire like bar scene and it's so cool i actually went to my first speakeasy in washington dc so yeah it was really cool just to see that come up i thought it was really fun because this does take place in washington dc so i also thought that claire had a really cool charm i don't want to say what her charm is just in case you guys decide to read the book she never really wanted to use it she did use it once to get herself out of a bad situation, an unfair situation, but then she's never used it again since then. Although they had a charm, they all had a trick. There's a price, nothing is free. There's gonna be a cost for this freedom. So I will give you this charm. I will give you this gift. I will give you this blessing, but this bad thing or this negative thing is definitely gonna be attached to it. This was very easy to read. It definitely feels very fantasy-like. There's a lot of world building. There's a lot of character building. I do feel like I want it more. I don't know what exactly, but 
it's just different and it probably reads exactly how it's supposed to but this is my very first time reading a historical fantasy so this was my first experience to this genre so I would have to read more to really thoroughly review and assess it and have anything to compare it to it's definitely not high stakes but there was a lot of mystery there's a fighting scene and so it definitely had those remnants of regular fantasy that I'm used to seeing I don't quite know how I'm going to rate this just yet but I know that I had a good time so yeah those are my thoughts for now I mean I am running off of a few hours of sleep so <laughs> I'm probably gonna have a lot more to say during a wrap up. Anyway, so now we are left with The Deep by River Solomon. My eyes are burning, I am not going to lie. So I'm going to read as much as I can this morning. Hopefully I can finish this by noon. I do have a very busy afternoon, so I'll see you guys at the next update. So they have blind dates with a book that you can get from the library. I can't even. And the librarian was just letting me know they don't even have to open it. You can just pick one and check it out and see what you get when you get home. I finished the deep. Ah, oh my God. Not me reading three books in three days. Okay. Three books in three days. Three books in three days. Three books in three days. Love this for me. This was actually very beautiful writing. This particular author, River Solomon, this was very beautifully written. Um, but I can't say that I had a blast or that I was captivated. I do think that it was a very beautiful meaning more than anything else. The biggest takeaway from this is that we are all responsible for carrying and sharing and remembering our history. We cannot leave it up to just one person or just the elders or just one group of like woke people. We all have to share and that responsibility because it is much too big of a burden for just one person or a few people or even like one group to carry. So it was very beautiful and it had a very strong message. This is a great book for a book club, which is why it had like questions in the back. And I don't even remember if I told you guys what it was about, but our main character basically holds the memories for her people and she is known as the historian. And it says the memories harrowing and wonderful, traumatic and terrible are destroying yet too. And so she flees to the surface, escaping her expectations and her responsibilities and discovers a world that though 
Wajinuru left behind long ago. So it was really fun. Fun isn't the right word because I don't think I had fun while reading this. I think it was very interesting and it was very engaging. I think I am just fantasied out, which I just noticed all three of the books that I read in this video, they are all fantasies and they were all by black authors. I didn't even plan for that. That's so cool. But that is all that I have to say about The Deep at this time. Hey, hey, from Editing Joyce. I just wanted to pop in really quickly because I said that I did not have a blast with this. I didn't have fun and I can't remember else what I said. But anyway, I just wanted to make it clear. The book was not intended for you to have a blast and to have fun. The book is actually extremely powerful and it has a very strong message. This is actually a book that I would reread because I'm pretty sure if I reread the book, I could gain such a deeper understanding of what the author is trying to convey to us. It's not in first person POV. They're not really using pronouns. And so it's just different. You really need to pay attention. It's so many underlining themes that are trying to be addressed here, not just the fantastical world that they live in. And I really appreciate the afterword. I'm really glad that they included that in the book. It says each new telling of the deep has been productive rather than destructive. And each new iteration has been carried out with the admiration of the previous. So I absolutely love that. And they go on to say during the greatest Holocaust the world has ever known, pregnant American bound African slaves were thrown overboard by thousands during labor for being sick and disruptive cargo. I know you lying. And then they basically say their story took one of the most gruesome details of the Atlantic slave trade and reframed it. So like I said, it has a heavy message. It has a deep message. I think this is a very important book. They were all very historic and very powerful reads. And I did not even realize that was the vibe for the video. But anyway, I just wanted to say that because I did not want you guys to think that I did not enjoy this book. I did. I just need more time to process everything that I have been exposed to and uncovered in this book so back to it I was going to do a February wrap up, but then I was like, you know what? I don't think I am. I think I'm just gonna do a quarterly wrap up. So I will do a Q1 wrap up sharing like best, the worst flops and all that jazz, just because I don't know, I think it's fun. Nonetheless, I will talk about this book again. I just finished it and I was like, oh, I'm just ready to be done reading so I can just like chill. <laughs> like all this reading, I'm on overload here. But anyway, I clearly have an addiction and I need you guys to pray for me. This is insane. One, two, three, four, five books from the library. Why, Joyce? Why? I might as well just throw my physical TBR in the garbage because I'm clearly obsessed with the library and I really am. I love the library and lately I've just been going to different libraries just to see and they're all so beautiful. They're all so different. Oh my God. And that one with that blind date for a book? Stop playing with me. Absolutely love that. Before we go here, I am going to share my March TBR with you guys and all the books that I got from the library. So I'm not going to talk about what each of them are because some of them I don't know and then some of them are grouped for other videos. Maybe I should just get my stack. Let me grab my stack real quick. Okay, okay, okay. I do plan on doing a week in the life video. And so I plan to read three books in that video, which are The Teacher by Frieda McFadden, The Overnight Guest, which I am doing as a buddy read with a friend of mine, and then the other book, my most, my highly anticipated release of the year, This Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan. I also want to get to The Unwanted Guest. I actually finally set up my Libby account. Stop playing with me. I am addicted. I am hooked. This is the best thing since sliced bread, since a microwave. Like Libby, I've been missing out. So I love Libby. I went ahead and I downloaded the audiobook of An Unwanted Guest because I had the physical copy from the library and I just didn't get to it. That's the only thing when you check out so many books at once, probably won't get through all of them so I had to take it back so I do have the audiobook copy and it's basically like a locked room mystery sort of like a whodunit and it's like this group of people who are like on this weekend retreat somebody ends up dead and it looks like it's an accident when maybe it isn't because I guess a second person comes up dead so now everyone's like hold on something's fishy in here so that's that one the next book on my TBR that's what I went to get from the library and it is a big Swiss I can't really remember what this is about let me see oh Oh yes, a sex therapist actually falls in love with a client. I guess she was like listening to her session and then they accidentally meet and they start having an affair. And yeah, this just sounds like it's gonna be wild and crazy. It's in that literary contemporary fiction genre, which is my jam. I am ready to get back to that. I have read way too many fantasy books. The next book on my March TBR is A Woman Is No Man. And this is by Etoff Rum. So I actually read Evil Eye by Etoff Rum and I loved it. I really enjoyed that book. Again, we will talk about 
that in whatever wrap up I do. I don't even remember what the book is about. I just knew it was by her and I wanted to read more books by that author. The next book on the list is House of Eve. I'm so excited. So many of you have recommended this and it was already a book that I was going to get. This I am actually going to do in tandem. My friend actually has the audio copy through her Audible. So she's just going to give me the password so that I can listen to it because she said the audio book is so good. She said she literally was like crying in her kitchen. So I was like, mm, it's time for me to read a book like that. The next book on my list is The Fury by Alex Michaelides. That was one of my anticipated releases for January. At this point, I just need to get to it. The next book on the list is Time's Undoing. That was basically my impulse buy in February. So I just pushed it to March. And then I have four other books that I want to read for part two of my reading booktubers favorites. The four books are Bear Town by Frederick Bachman or Bachman, Sula by Toni Morrison, Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood, and Beautiful World Where Are You by Sally Rooney. So those four books I will be reading in March for that video. So make sure that you are subscribed. Come back so that you can see me continue to take down the TBR. And then these were just my two surprise books. I hope that I can get to them. I mean, they're due back in March. So if I don't, I will have to check them out again or whatever. But this one is I Wish We Weren't Related. I don't know how to say the name Rocka. I think that's how you say it. I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to figure out how you say it. But I believe the author is Indian. So that's really cool. I love to read more than just authors that are white or even just black. I love to read truly diversely. So hopefully this is a good time. And then I believe I saw this somewhere because it is on Reese's Book Club. It's Cassandra in Reverse by Holly Smell. Small? I don't know. <laughs> But I love this here. The author of The Rosie Project actually wrote the blurb. I do have that book on my shelf and I do plan to read that book this year. It says, this is an utterly charming novel that tells a story of heartbreak, second chances, and one woman's journey through time to discover that thinking and feeling differently from those around her doesn't mean she's broken. I hope I can get to this. This sounds so cute. Definitely sounds like my jam. So that is it. Oh my God, that is a lot. And I have to read at least one nonfiction. So child, we have a lot of reading to do. If I read this many books and I only wanted to challenge myself because March is like reading month. If I successfully read all these books in March, let me tell you right now, in April, I'm probably going to read like five books. So I'm getting like a swamp. That's a lot of books. Anyway, do not forget to subscribe and prioritize self-care. I hope that you guys had fun. Let me know if you guys have read any of these books or any of the books that I read in today's video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. I can't even remember. It was something that was just said. What do we want? Just this. Oh yeah, and I forgot. There was also this guy. He's always singing and humming. So what do we want it? No. I did really like the audiobook. I adore black folk language, like tall glass of lemonade. Michigan weather is a hot mess. And I was like, oh yes, a black version of the Hunger Games. Yesterday, it was 72. We were all at the park, all outside. Today, it's cold, it's storming. It's a hot mess.